My hero in my early life was my grandfather Robertson, my mother's dad. He was such a wonderful influence on my life. And he had been a, a tool and die maker, worked his way up, became the foreman of a big shop, 200 men. But uh, he wanted to commit himself to the work of the Lord, and he didn't believe he could do both that and serve the Lord's people. And so uh, he decided to start a grocery store. And uh, he didn't know a lot of, about the business, but he uh, ventured out and uh, for 43 years, he ran a grocery store beginning in, I think, 1922. He set up this uh, store, Robertson Red and White. He had a butcher shop in the back. It was just a little store, but it became a little institution in that community. Mothers who were struggling with uh, their boys, um, they would bring them down there. And my grandfather would give them a job delivering groceries and he would minister to them, work with them to uh, get them on the straight and narrow. And uh, I remember Jack Gaycliffe, who was the big sports writer for the local paper. When my grandfather died, he took his whole column to talk about him and said uh, that uh, Bill Robertson uh, wasn't one to promote himself, but he was the first one at the door when Jack's father died, and uh, he was always ready to meet the needs of others. And my grandparents lived above the store, uh, even though my grandfather made a, a, a good income and probably could have owned a home separately, uh, he wanted to keep life simple. And so he, they didn't have a garden, uh, they didn't have much of a yard. Um, and when there was a need, my grandfather would call my grandmother, she'd come down the stairs, put on the apron, take over the store, and my grandfather would go out on his pastoral visits. Did a lot of gospel preaching. And, um, uh, you know, I... When I think about my grandfather, uh, I think of moral suasion. I think of a man who influenced people around him, not by uh, shouting at them, not by uh, pushing his views, but simply by living a godly life in an ungodly world. And there were five verses that came to my mind that uh, reminded me of him. And I'll just leave those with you. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And then number two, Philippians 1.27, let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Philippians chapter four, verse five, let your gentleness or your sweet reasonableness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. And then Colossians 4, 6, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. And finally, Hebrews 13, 5, let your conduct be without covetousness, be content with such things as you have, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Those five statements were uh, hallmarks of my grandfather's life. Now, just a little story. When I was a boy, I was maybe five years old, I don't know, just a little fellow. And I had the privilege of staying with my grandparents. This is always an exciting time for me. Although they had very few toys, they had a few, uh, a few cars and a few blocks to play with in their living room. Uh, but uh, they had a big Murphy bed. They'd pull that bed down from the wall in their little living room and that's where I'd get to stay and I could look out the window and see the traffic going by on Russell Avenue. There wasn't a lot to do around the area but uh, my grandmother she would let me go down to the store and pick out a can of any kind of fruit I wanted. I used to get these these black cherry um, uh, they were just so tasty to me and there were certain things I got to have there because they had them in the grocery store. Well, on a particular day, it was a busy day in the store. They were bringing in supplies. They were stocking the shelves and I got in the way. And I, I remember they had this uh, Coleman's dry mustard, these little cans, and uh, they were putting them up on the shelf and somehow I knocked a bunch of them over onto the floor. And all my grandfather said to me was, 
don't do that, son. And I was devastated. And I remember they had a very narrow spot between the store and the neighbor's fence. And there was a Nielsen's ice cream sign that stood there and sort of was a little barrier. And I got in behind that in this little narrow alleyway. And I just was so brokenhearted. And, you know, now as I look back on it, and I wonder, like, I wasn't that highly sensitive a child. What was it? It wasn't the anger of my grandfather. He wasn't angry. He didn't express in any negative way, anything against me. It was that I wanted so much to please him. And I hadn't, I disappointed him. And you know, it's a wonderful thing to have that kind of influence on the lives of others. This is the influence that the Lord has on us. He doesn't yell at us. He doesn't give us a rough time. But the, the thought that my life should be governed, not by fear, not by guilt, but by a desire to please him. It elevates my life to a, a very different plane. It's a positive thing. It's forward-looking. It's problem-solving. It, it saves me from the cross-currents of, of self-pleasing and the temptations that are around us. I was thinking the other day in the Gospel of John, he speaks about life and love and light. If someone's life is out of touch, if it's, if it's off the path, if it's got into difficulty, you will find out that it's one of those three. Either they don't have the life. They're not living in the power of an endless life. They don't have the resources of heaven because they're not saved. Or the second thing is they don't have light. It may be there are certain principles in scripture they don't yet understand, and they're struggling because they lack that understanding. Or it may be a lack of love, love to Christ, love that, that expresses itself in obedience. As Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my words. And so I think of people who are going through problems right now. And I ask myself, what is it? Is it a lack of life? Do they not know the Lord? Or if they do, is it a lack of light? Do they need instruction from the word of God to understand these divine principles? Or is it a lack of love? They know what they ought to do. But they've fallen out of love with the Savior. They've made other choices. They, they love other things more than they love him. I look into my own heart and I say, oh God, may I be the, like the little children that John talks about in his epistles, where I live in the fullness of that life and the fullness of that light and the fullness of that love. Oh God, help us to enter into these things in a real way, to realize that, that our influence over others is not by power, it's not by being clever. It's not by arguing people into something. And so here are the five little verses again, a little handful of blessings that may be true in our lives and cause us this moral suasion to influence people around us. Let your light so shine before men. Let your conduct be worthy of the gospel. Let your sweet reasonableness, your gentleness be known to all. Let your speech be always with grace, and let your conduct be without covetousness.